Jay Gomez, don't forget the Jay bitch! Put your hands together, New York City. What the fuck is up? <laughs> Holy shit! What the fuck is up, white people? A sea of white faces. Had I known it was gonna be this many white people, I wouldn't have dressed it in my white supremacist outfit. <laughs> my fucking Nazi uniform. This really doesn't look good for me. Uh, do no crowd shots at all. That's the rule, okay? <laughs> this is great, man. I don't mind performing for, for white men. You guys aren't that bad in my book. <laughs> Everyone fucking hates you guys, though. It's true, right? <laughs> Public enemy number one, the white men. They fucking hate you, dude. Tell you right to your face. Go fuck yourself, you white piece of shit. <laughs> Look, they love it. Look at him. It's all white guys. They're like, yeah, get him. Get that white guy over there. White guys are not the problem, okay? White women are the problem. Let me explain to you why. Because they have all the same privilege, but they're fucking sneaky about it, you know? White women have single-handedly convinced everyone that they are also minorities. God bless your souls, white women. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. You talk to a white chick in 2018, she's like, that's right, I'm also a minority. <laughs> I have the same plight as the black man. I have to deal with all this discrimination in tennis class and at Whole Foods. <laughs> Life's hard. It's true, you know? They ruin all the fun stuff too, right? They tried to ruin catcalling a few years ago. You remember that? That was like a big thing online. They were like, you can't catcall. That was all white chicks. First of all, catcalling is not a white issue. Stay the fuck out of catcalling, white people. <laughs> white guys don't catcall, okay? Black guys catcall, Hispanic guys catcall. It's not even called catcalling. It's called hollering, you fucking nerds. <laughs> We holler at bitches and it fucking works, okay? <laughs> Go holler at a black chick or a Puerto Rican chick tonight. What's up, girl? You look good. She's like, you know I do. <laughs> then you guys try to gentrify our neighborhoods, right? Some white chick moves into Harlem. Some black guy tries to holler at her. What's up, girl? You look good. She's like, oh my God, he's raping me. <laughs> Somebody write a blog. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, you know? They try to kill Louis C.K. They won't stop till that man is dead. They're trying to kill Louis C.K., you know? <laughs> Who would have thought in 2018 I would be the most powerful Louis in comedy? <laughs> Nobody saw that coming. What did Louis C.K. really do? What did he do? He jerked off in front of a few women, right? Yeah. Who hasn't? <laughs> What, are we gonna be fucking school children about this? Who hasn't? That's a consolation prize anytime my girlfriend doesn't wanna fuck. It's her idea most of the time. She's like, just jerk off, all right? I'm like, fine. Then I do it angrily at her. <sighs> you hit her with your elbow so she can't fall asleep. Wake up, bitch. <sighs> ain't going to fucking sleep. That's why I'm done. You come on her thigh, you go to sleep, you don't talk about it. It's true. And look, I'm a feminist first, okay? Everyone knows that about me. <laughs> I say you gotta treat men and women equally. I really do believe that, okay? But I don't believe that Louis C.K. was treated fairly. I really don't, because Louis C.K. lost like $30 million worth of TV work. These women were jerked off in front of. That's not the same. <laughs> like, miss, what would you rather? Would you rather lose $30 million or would you rather have a man jerk off in front of you? I would rather have 30 million men jerk off in front of me <laughs> than lose one dollar. <laughs> Don't touch my fucking money, are you crazy? <laughs> I say eye for an eye, okay? I say eye for an eye. You gotta you got give these women retribution because uh, they're victims. I'll call them victims. Here's what you do. This, here's, how you get, here's how you get Louis C.K. back, okay? What you gotta do is you gotta put Louis in the center of a room. He can't move, okay? He's gotta sit in a chair. He can't fucking do anything. Then one by one, each one of his victims get to come out, stand in front of him, strip down naked, and masturbate. <laughs> to let him know how it feels.
They, they put their leg up on a stool like, take that, Louie. <laughs> Start squirting in his face. <laughs> He's like, oh my God, this is the worst day of my life. I can't believe that I have to deal with this. This is... And look, let's not get this shit twisted. I'm not defending Louis C.K. I don't give a fuck about Louis C.K. I really don't. I hope every comedian that's more famous than me gets Me Too'd or gets into some sort of accident. Because <laughs> every time one of them get into trouble, I move up one more notch in the industry. Just, just one fucking... That's all I need is a little progress. You know? Like when Tracy Morgan's tour bus got hit by that Walmart truck. <laughs> I was like, yes! There was like seven comics on that tour bus. I got a couple weekends out of it, come on. Let's talk about the issues, guys. Racism, racism, it's out there, right? Clap your hands if sometimes you're even a little bit racist. Thank you for the honest people in the crowd. If you're not clapping your hands, you're a fucking phony. Let's get real. All white people are a little bit racist sometimes. All black people are a little bit racist sometimes. I know this because I'm Puerto Rican, and all white people and all black people are both very comfortable being racist against each other in front of Latinos. <laughs> yeah, because you both think we're on your side, you know? <laughs> but you want to know a secret? Latinos hate both of you motherfuckers. <laughs> I hate white people and I hate black people. And that's Latino privilege. Because when the race war hits, we can just wait to see who's winning and then choose that side. <laughs> like, ah, white power, I was with these guys the whole time, all right. <laughs> Build that wall, let's do it. <laughs> and obviously, I'm just kidding, white people are not gonna win the race war. <laughs> Have you seen the Olympics? You're fucked. You guys can't win a race, much less the race war. <laughs> yeah, man. What about older people? Do you guys give older people more room to be racist than younger people, like grandparents? Yeah. You do, right? Of course. I say 80 and above, they can say whatever they want, you know? <laughs> 80 and above, they say whatever they want, you know, but they gotta be 80 in 2018. And then in like 20 years, the last racist person will just die off. I just solved racism. <laughs> You're welcome. 80 and above, they can say whatever they want. 90 and above, they can do whatever they want. If you get raped by a 90-year-old man, get to a karate class. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Beat up that fucking brittle old man. Defend yourself. You know? Like, my grandmother was the sweetest woman in the world. Sweetest woman in the world, but she said some racist shit, you know? because she's from a different time. I grew up in Rockland County, New York, which is right outside of the city. It's about an hour outside of the city. And there's a little stretch along Route 304 that goes from Spring Valley to Muncie. Now, in Spring Valley, it is all Haitian people, okay? In Muncie, it's all Hasidic Jews. So I remember when I was 16 years old, I was learning how to drive, and my grandma would chime in with these fucking brutally racist comments. By the way, that's when real racism shows its face. When road rage kicks in, you're behind the wheel of a car, you can say whatever the fuck you want, right? So I remember my grandmother was trying to protect me, okay? She said, listen to me, when you're driving through Spring Valley, you gotta be careful, because these Haitians are gonna try to steal your car. <laughs> Lock your doors, roll up your windows, don't even stop at red lights, just boom, go straight through. <laughs> Take the ticket, it's not worth your life. <laughs> and you wanna know why? She said it's because they have pirate blood. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what she said. She thought that all Haitian people moved to the United States on pirate ships. <laughs> Not that they wanted to steal your car. They have to steal your car. They're pirates. It's in their blood. <laughs> they take vessels. <laughs> but then she said, you got to be even more careful. Once you go down Route 304, once you get into Muncie, this is a quote, while the Hasidic Jews look safer than the Haitians, they're not. <laughs> Here's what the Hasidic Jews will do is they will wait till you're driving by. Then they will push their baby strollers in front of your car. <laughs> so you hit their babies so they can sue you. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's a real lesson that my grandmother taught me when I was 16 years old. That Haitian people have pirate blood and that Jews are willing to sacrifice their babies for a lawsuit. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. I know it's fucked up. I see some of your faces. Did you want to know the most fucked up part about that story? It wasn't actually my grandmother. It was my mom. But my mom wasn't that old, so whenever I would tell the, the story as my mom, nobody would laugh. They'd just be like, that's fucking crazy. She can't say a shit like that. <laughs> Anyone even more fucked up about that? Wasn't actually my mom. It's me. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> if you're ever in Rockland County, New York, these Jews and Haitians, they're everywhere. So, you know, be careful. Be careful if you're driving. A little bit of a gift for you guys. <laughs> Yeah!